Hi, and welcome to Crew Connect TV. We're here with Espen Paulson from ICS. Espen, it's so nice to have you here. Nice to be here, Lily. So, Espen, you've been um, at the conference and you gave a keynote actually this morning. So, um, some of it was on technology, some of it was on innovation, some of it was also on the future of this industry. Um, so, um, in your opinion, how will seafarers be disrupted by this onslaught of new digital technologies and innovation? And how do you see this industry managing this change? Well, I, as someone said, uh, seafarers' roles have changed since the days of Noah's Ark. And if I go back to my own days at sea, which I mentioned briefly this morning in 1966, uh, where a 9,000-ton deadweight ship uh, with a crew of 40, and then I was uh, aboard one of our own ships, which is 14,000 TU container ship with a crew of 20, I think that is just one good example right there. Uh, I, I guess the big difference is that we, uh, we have a perception that te technological change will be quicker in the next 20, 30 years than it has been in the last 30. And I, I, I certainly do believe that because I think the whole advent of technology and the, the examples we've seen of what it can do to various industries, it, you know, it's not going to exclude sh shipping. People may say shipping is a conservative industry, but I think actually uh, the more ship owners and ship managers can see some of all these lovely new gizmos that are available, uh, the more you know they will embrace them. And this is just part of evolutionary change, I would say. But as far, specifically, uh, seafarers roles, as was discussed this morning, will change because what in the 17th and 18th century was a guy or a person who needed big muscles to pull sheets, today is a person who is savvy with instruments and, and, and with uh, be it digital or be it this or that and the other. It, 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 it is much more, it will be much more electronic and it'll just be just much more digital and much more, um, you know, equipment orientated. Um, I, I mean, I, 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 on this container ship that I was on, um, you know, I was struck by the silence. It's just so incredibly silent because basically everything is just pushing a button and then looking at a screen and so on. Whereas in the old days, you know, they are outside with a sextant. They're pick, picking their noon position with the sun on the horizon and so on. I mean, it's just totally changed. In fact, today they're not even paper charts. So all of this is just part of the process. And, and you know, CFR's roles and jobs and skill sets will just change along with this technology. So does that mean that the seafarers' careers uh, will change and the seafarers' careers' progression will change? Well, I, you know, I, I was in Dubai last week and I, I listened to all this stuff about how uh, everything was going to be unmanned in the next, uh, you know, short period of time. And I, I'm a little bit skeptical on that because, first of all, the existing world fleet is around somewhere between 55 and 60,000 ships. If you take a new building order book of, let's say, just for argument's sake, 10 or 15 percent, let's say 12 to 15,000 ships, out of those, how many of those ships are automated? Uh, not even 1%, not even probably 0.1%. So my point is that, that these ships that are being built today and the ships that are afloat today have traditional seafarers on board. And even new buildings today, my company, we're building VLCCs and Aframax tankers. There, there may be slightly fewer people on board and they might be more savvy in certain jobs. But, but that ship is, these ships with a write-off period of supposedly 20, 25 years in accounting terms, I mean, uh, you know, you're talking a vast number of ships, cruise ships we were talking about today, one company alone, uh, MSC, needing 75,000 um, positions filled in the next uh, two, whatever it is, two or three years. So I think, I think there is a, a complete misconception about this. You know, the existing ships of the fleet and most new buildings on order today require human beings to be on board. <laughs> um, speaking of the future, uh, and I think that, um, well, I've been asking a lot of people these uh, today, but um, so uh, women in leadership roles in yeah. this industry, yeah, yeah. Um, how do you see uh, this in the future? Will it, will it have the rapid, uh, rapid adaption uh, that people want? or um, would it be a slow progress? Well, I mean, diversity, be it gender or be it cultural, is a great thing. And, and that, to me, is what makes shipping such a great industry, precisely for this very reason. You know, it's diverse, it's global. Um, as far as gender is concerned, you know, when I started in this business, there were really very, very, very few women, typically in, if there were, it would be in legal and accounting uh, skill sets, that sort of thing. 
Today, if you fast forward today, an organization like Vista is, is becoming more and more prominent. You see them more and more. And I also know women who say, well, I don't want to be in Vista because I want to just be a judge on my own. I don't care whether I'm a man or woman. I'm just, I'm just there trying to compete and to do a job. But whatever your point of view, that, that's irrelevant. The bottom line is that there are far, far more women in shipping today than ever. And I think the number is growing. You may have seen uh, some of these trade winds uh, reports and uh, you know, other, other media, we have whole sections of, of women who climbed into top positions in whether it be CEO, CFO, chairmanships and so on, chairpersonships. Uh, it's happening. And, and, and you know, part of it is that sh yeah, shipping is perceived to be a very sort of male dominated uh, business. But I mean, if you take, for example, insurance, legal and accounting, uh, that, that just to, to name three skill sets, or even chartering, you know, or even senior management, why wouldn't it be a woman? I mean, I'm a father of three daughters, so I'm always trying to promote women, and, and I always have done. Um, as uh, we are celebrating 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, Kukana Global, that is, uh, we have an awards uh, uh, dinner coming up uh, tomorrow. Right, right, right. I would like to ask, as you were one of the judges, mm. um, if you could tell us about uh, what made the winners stand out to you. Well, it, 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 I, I, I'd actually, at, at the moment, I, I can't even tell you who the winners were, and if I could, I wouldn't, of course, because I wouldn't be allowed to, but, no, but we've all not. voted. Um, every single person nominated is worthy. And the, the difference, um, quite honestly, is, is just so, so tiny. I mean, it, I don't know, you go to the Oscars and what makes one film better than the other. You know, ultimately, it is, it is a judgment call. I, I read all the, um, the submissions, all of which, I, I, you know, there was nothing really much to, 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 to tell between them. I feel that even if someone doesn't win this time around, maybe if they have another go next year or the year after, hopefully, you know, they, they, they will win. But the way the world operates is there can only be one winner. winner and and um, I, but I take my hat off to all the finalists and to all those who took the trouble to enter because I think this is a very worthwhile thing to to have this kind of recognition, and particularly for the awards to be given out at a at a, what will be obviously a very big dinner and a very very big event. So I I, I there's so little to to uh, to um, to tell between them that I, I use my best endeavor, and I'm sure the other judges did as well. Husband, thank you very much for being here with us. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.